can modern integrated graphics really rival a budget graphics card in 2024? Well, to find out, I've tested the Ryzen 5 8600G's integrated graphics versus a discrete graphics card in the case of the RX 580 2040 ASP. And now I have my answer and I'm gonna share it with you lot. A lot of people speculated that the integrated GPUs in the new 8000G Ryzen APUs could rival mid-range graphics cards from around 2016 to 2017. Well, I've got the RX 580 2040 ASP and it launched at that time and it's fairly budget as well, so it matches the description. These days you can find these for around 60 odd dollars on AliExpress and to be fair, the performance from them is not actually that bad and you can see that in a video up there. However, back to this video though, I've tested the RX 580 2040 ASP with a Ryzen 5 7600. I'll explain that combo in a bit, but it's around the same price as what you'll get just for the 8600G. So which one of these combinations is better? In order to answer that question, I've tested the Ryzen 5 8600G against the 7600 and RX 580 2040 ASP combo at 1080p in the PC behind me, which has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory clocked at 6400 MHz CL32, a two terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD, and a gigabyte B650M Gaming X AX motherboard. The latest drivers have been installed for both the integrated graphics and the 2040 ASP. I've left the integrated graphics at the stock out of the box settings, but I've undervolted, raised the power limit, and I've overclocked the memory on the RX 580 2040 ASP. So let's get into the benchmarks. First game up today is a breeze for both these graphics cards, or should I say GPUs, because that's what they are. Anyways, both GPUs are set for a competitive gaming experience. Getting north of 200 FPS in Fortnite at 1080p is excellent performance. Yes, the RX 580 2048 SP is performing better, getting just south of 300 frames per second. But if you've got a 144Hz monitor, you're going to be having a great gaming experience on both of these GPUs. In Cyberpunk, the 760M graphics do start to trail behind by quite a bit, particularly with the 1% lows. The averages are getting just above 40 frames per second there, but with the discrete card, you're getting just south of 60 FPS. But the 1% lows we've integrated are taking a bit of a hit, so that's something to be known there. F123 is playable on both GPUs as they both got north of 60 FPS on average, so there's no problems here at all. If you wanted a slightly more competitive experience, I'll drop this to the very low preset, particularly with the integrated graphics, so that's something to be known right there. But performance across the board, particularly on the discrete graphics card, is much better, particularly with the 1% lows. In Rainbow Six Siege, you're set for a competitive gaming experience on both of these GPUs, but the RX 580 2048 SP is basically dominating integrated right here, getting much better 1% lows and getting north of 240 FPS on average, so. Yeah, this card performs much better in this game, which is kind of disappointing from the 760Mi GPU to be honest, but performance is still playable on integrated. In Jedi Survivor, the RX 580 2048 SP provides a somewhat playable experience with some pretty decent 1% loads from what we've seen, but the same cannot be said for integrated in this. 19 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 15 frames per second is not brilliant performance at all. I don't care what you say, that is not playable. You will need to enable FSR in this title, and even then, it's not really worth it. You're not going to be having a good gaming experience at all. Where you will be having a good gaming experience though is Spider-Man Remastered. Even on the medium preset, the RX 580 2040 ASP did a very good job getting north of 60 FPS on average with a decent 1% low at just over 50 frames per second. And to be fair on the integrated graphics, they did a somewhat decent job. 38 FPS on average with a 1% low of just over 30 is not bad at all. It's certainly playable probably not the best gameplay experience in the world and if you wanted more frames maybe enable FSR or tweak some of the settings and you should be good to go but either way Spider-Man Remastered is playable on both of these GPUs. So to no one's surprise the RX 580 2048 SP is 
quite a bit quicker than the integrated graphics in the 8600G. It pretty much defeated it across the board by about 50 odd percent off the top of my head. It was quite a large margin, but this is what I was expecting. Because the 8600G is just purely integrated graphics, I think it put up quite a decent fight today and even in the esports games, you're still going to be set for a competitive gaming experience and even in games like F123, it's still going to get above 60 FPS as long as you pair it with some pretty fast DDR5 memory. The 8600G will struggle in newer AAA games but is there any surprise there? These games are very hard to run and this is just an integrated GPU. In all fairness, the RX 580 2048 SP didn't fare that much better, but it was a lot more playable than integrated graphics, but it was still not ideal. Linking back to the combination of the Ryzen 5 7600 and RX 580 2048 SP, and I wanted to test this combination because it costs slightly more than the 8600G. However, the Ryzen 5 7600 is a much better processor in my opinion, as it has double the L3 cache at 32 megabytes. So when you go to upgrade this GPU to something a bit more powerful, like, I don't know, an RTX 3080 for instance, you will be seeing more gaming performance as cache is super important for gaming. Also the 7600 supports a 16x slot at PCIe Gen 5 speeds where this is locked to x8 at PCIe Gen 4 so you could be limiting your GPU performance now and in the future because of that limited bandwidth. And the pricing for both these combos is not actually that far apart. The RX 580 2048 SP and the Ryzen 5 7600 combo is slightly more expensive, but if you're just saving on a GPU for later, I highly recommend this one because you're going to be getting more performance in the future. So essentially the 8600G is a pretty decent integrated graphic solution paired with a, I wouldn't say bad CPU because it's not, kind of a mid CPU. But I wouldn't write off this little APU just yet. There is a target market for it, and I suspect people who are very conscious of their power consumption are going to like this APU. Especially if they mainly play older titles and esports games, I think they're going to be having a great experience on this little APU while using little to no power at all. This thing barely uses any power. So you won't need to invest that much into a power supply because a 450 watt would be way more than enough for something like this and you could even get away with like a small form factor build with the stock cooler which is bundled with this as well so yeah the 8600g definitely has an audience but it is a lot more niche than say getting a 7600 and one of these also the igpu in this runs on rdna free graphics which is the newest from amd whereas this is polaris which is slowly being phased out by amd so driver support might be a bit of a concern with the older graphics card. But then again, this does depend which GPU you go with. So which solution is the best for you? For most gamers, I recommend getting the Ryzen 5 7600 and maybe a cheap old graphics card like an RX 580 or something like that. Or maybe one of those cheap ones from AliExpress, like this one. You'll get better performance in the short term, and long term when you finally come to upgrade your graphics card. With the 8600G, I recommend this one to gamers who are conscious of their power consumption. Maybe you live in an area of the world where electricity is expensive or you experience frequent blackouts. This is where the 8600G is a good option for you. Other than that though, if you want to save a bit more money, I recommend AM4 as there's still some excellent deals there and AM4 is still getting new CPUs. So if you want to save even more money, AM4 is a good option option as well. So if you want to see how the RX 580 2048 SP gets on, there will be a video for that right there and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good rest of your day.